Hi everyone, welcome back once again. We had given a brief outline on what a coordinate system is in our second lecture. We had dealt with the single coordinate axis. In which the, the position vector r, the velocity vector v and the acceleration vector a were represented in terms of scalars. Now, however, this system as such, the single coordinate system may not work for other types of motion such as the curvilinear motion. So, hence it is better if we choose a three dimensional coordinate system for representing the motion parameters with the help of vectors. So, remember one thing, the direction and magnitudes of the position, the velocity and the acceleration does not depend upon the coordinate system, but their representation, how they are represented, that depends upon the coordinate system. Which coordinate system should we choose? the choice of coordinate system. The choice of the coordinate system. Now, the choice of the coordinate system is usually based on how the motion is generated or how the data is given to you in a question. Sometimes the simplicity in solving a problem can also uh, vary greatly depending upon which coordinate system do you choose. So, we need to use our engineering judgment to understand the best coordinate system to solve a particular type of problem. So, we had discussed earlier the type of motion in a lecture, they are the rectilinear motion, and curvilinear motion. Now, rectilinear motion can be best represented using the single coordinate axis or the Cartesian coordinate system. Curvilinear motion can either be described in terms of the Cartesian coordinate system or in terms of cylindrical coordinate system or we can use path variables. Now, in this corresponding lecture, we shall be limiting our discussions to Cartesian coordinate system. You must all be familiar with the Cartesian coordinate system, this which is the simplest of all the coordinate systems. Now, it is actually named after Rene Descartes. Who introduced the coordinate system to show how algebra can be solved using geometric problems. Now, in Cartesian coordinate system, a point P is represented in terms of the rectangular coordinates x, y and z, which you can see it here. In Cartesian coordinate system, the corresponding position vector, which is actually a function of time, is represented in terms of x t into i cap, y t into j cap plus z of t into k cap. Now, where x of t, y of t and z of t are the scalar functions of time, 
along the three coordinate axes i j and k are the unit vectors or the base vectors and the direction shall remain at all times constant along the x y and z respectively now to find the magnitude of the position vector we simply take r equals x of t square plus y of t square plus z of t square now remember one thing here we have to substitute the corresponding value of t here we have to substitute the corresponding value of t here as such to give you the position vectors at each and every instant of time similarly if you substitute the value of t here you can get the magnitude of the position vector r in order to find the velocity vector we simply need to differentiate the corresponding position vector so velocity vector v which as if function of time is dr by dt now as such if you differentiate now x into di by dt plus x dot is actually the derivative of x so i shall represent x of t is derivative as x dot d into i cap plus y into dj by dt plus y dot into j cap plus z into dk by dt plus z dot into k cap now remember one thing here i had differentiated since this is a product so i had differentiated by parts this and this to get this corresponding value this value and this value respectively di by dt dj by dt and dk by dt are the corresponding change in the unit vectors in case the coordinate axis is moving either in terms of translation or rotation we shall deal more about this when we go to the translating reference frame but as such in this corresponding case these values will be zero so di by dt equals dj by dt equals dk by dt equals zero here so my corresponding velocity vector will turn out to be x dot i cap plus y dot j cap plus z dot k cap x dot y dot and z dot are actually the components of velocity in the three directions so we have here x dot is actually vx y dot is vy z dot is vz and the magnitude of velocity can be obtained by x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square now if you want to obtain acceleration we differentiate it once again with respect to time if i perform the same differentiation aspect i'll get here as such x double dot i cap plus y double dot j cap plus z double dot k cap so here ax is x double dot or i can say vx dot ay is y double dot or i can say vi dot az is 
z double dot or i can say vz dot remember ax ay and az are actually the magnitudes of the corresponding accelerations in the three directions so as such ax into i cap plus ay into j cap plus az into k cap that will be your acceleration vector now now we can integrate the acceleration vector to get the velocity vector and we can integrate the velocity vector to obtain the corresponding position vector so as such let us solve a problem to have a basic idea of this a particle with an initial position vector r equals phi i plus 6j plus k meters has an acceleration imposed on it given as a equals 60 into i cap plus 5t square j cap plus 10 k cap meter per second square if the particle has zero velocity initially what are the acceleration velocity and position of the particle when t equals 10 seconds this question is actually a question from shapes given the position vector initially that is phi i cap plus 6 j cap plus k cap this is the particle at time t equals 0 so this is r vector at time t equals 0 now upon this corresponding particle an acceleration is imposed the acceleration is given as 6 t i cap plus 5 t square j cap plus 10 k cap meter per second square now our aim is finding the velocity position and acceleration when time t equals 10 seconds now we can directly obtain the corresponding acceleration time t equals 10 seconds here itself but we'll write everything at the last so first we go to the velocity vector now velocity vector is actually the integral of the acceleration vector so as such 6 t square by 2 plus c1 i cap plus 5 by 3 t cube plus c2 into j cap plus 10 t into k cap this is how we get the corresponding velocity vector when you integrate remember that you are integrating these components separately and hence you should write the constants here itself now it is given that the particle has zero velocity initially so that data is also given v at t equals zero is zero so initially the particle has zero velocity so applying applying that boundary condition here we get we have v at t equals zero equals zero now if i substitute here i will get c1 i cap plus c2 j cap plus c3 k cap equals 0 from which i can get c1 equal to c2 equal to c3 equal to 0 okay now moving on to the next as such my velocity vector v will be equal to 3t square i cap plus 5 by 3 t cube j cap plus 
n t k cap. Now, in order to get the position of the vector, I have to integrate this corresponding velocity vector. So, if I integrate, I will get 3 t cube by 3 plus c 4 into i cap plus 5 by 12 t raised to 4 plus c 5 into j cap plus 10 t square by 2 into k cap. Now, we are given that r at t equals 0 was given as phi i plus 6 j plus k. So, if I substitute t equals 0 here, I will get c 4 into i cap plus c 5 into j cap plus I have forgot to write here plus c 6. Okay. Okay. Plus c 6 into k cap is equal to phi i plus 6 j plus k. Therefore, c 4 equal to phi, c 5 equal to 6 and c 6 equal to 1. Hence, my position vector at any time t, okay, at any time t is equal to t cube plus phi into i cap plus phi by 12 t raised to 4 plus 6 into j cap plus phi t square plus 1 into k cap. Now, now acceleration at time t equals 10 seconds just substitute the value of time t equals 10 seconds in this equation. So, if you substitute, you will get 60 i cap plus 500 j cap plus 10 k cap meter per second square. Similarly, substitute t equals 10 seconds for velocity, which you will get 300 into i cap plus 166 6.67 into j cap plus 100 into k cap meter per second. Similarly, position vector at time t equals 10 seconds. If you substitute the value, you will get 1005 into i cap plus 4172.67 into j cap plus phi naught 1 into k cap. So, substituting the corresponding value of t equals 10 second in the above three equations, you will get these corresponding values. Now, moving on, let me make a point very clear here. It may not always be possible to identify the type of motion from the data given. Like in the previous question, we do not know whether the motion is rectilinear or curvilinear. But that does not matter because the Cartesian coordinate system can be used to solve both rectilinear as well as curvilinear motions. Now, let us discuss uh, the curvilinear motion specifically in rectangular coordinate system. In my previous lecture, I had said that there may be a special case of curvilinear motion where 
the motion can be described by the superposition of rectilinear motions so that is our first case superposition of rectilinear motions now in this case the motion of a body though it is curvilinear can be represented by the superposition of two independent rectilinear motions maybe one along say one coordinate axis the second along the second coordinate axis this happens when the position velocity and acceleration along a coordinate system is not dependent upon the other two components for example let me give you the acceleration component say at a particular coordinate axis say x maybe it's a function of velocity along that direction displacement along that direction and time along that direction similarly the acceleration component along y is a function of vy y and t or the acceleration component along z is a function of vz z and t so in this corresponding the components of acceleration are function of the respective coordinate directions and are independent of the motion in the other directions so this is a case where we can consider as the superposition of two rectilinear motions these corresponding type of equations are called uncoupled equations and hence the motion along the x direction y direction and z direction can be solved as independent rectilinear motions so i can obtain a rectilinear equation along x direction along y direction and along z direction but the combined effect may be curvilinear one a classical example for this is the projectile motion now in a projectile motion consider i have a projectile okay initially it is thrown with a velocity say v0 now you see this corresponding v0 can be divided into two components okay one along x axis and the other along y axis so v along x axis if the corresponding angle is theta here this will be v0 cos theta this will be v0 sin theta now here along the corresponding x direction if i neglect the resistance due to wind or other effects this corresponding v0 cos theta will remain constant throughout the motion along the x direction so in this direction since it is v0 cos theta is constant along x direction i have ax equals 0 velocity here is constant and hence acceleration will become zero now in the y direction you have a constant acceleration that is the acceleration due to gravity so as such i have ay equals minus g meter per second square so v0 sin theta keeps on changing depending upon the time it keeps on changing this corresponding motion is an uncoupled motion in which i can solve both the motion along x direction and y direction separately without coupling the message this corresponding motion types is called superposition of rectilinear motions so this is actually a curvilinear one but i can represent the motion by superimposing two rectilinear motions now in a
general curvilinear motion in a general curvilinear motion the equations may be coupled so sometimes it becomes difficult to obtain an analytical solution to the problem and hence we may have to go to numerical methods for solving such problems let us do a problem a fighter plane is directly over an anti aircraft gun at time t equals 0 the plane has a speed of v1 of 500 kilometers per hour a shell is fired at t equals 0 in an attempt to hit the plane if the muzzle velocity v0 is 1000 meter per second how many meters d should the gun be aimed ahead of the plane to hit it what is the time of impact this question is also from shames now given data x at t equals 0 is 0 similarly y at t equals 0 is 0 now y at time of impact t equals say t f t final is equal to 2000 meters now muzzle velocity v0 is 1000 meter per second now velocity of the plane v1 it is given as 500 kilometers per hour if i 500 into 5 by 18 meter per second i think it is 138.89 meter per second now these are the data which are given to you now if you look at this case this corresponding motion is a classical example of projectile motion so i can consider this to be the superposition of two rectilinear motions one along the x-axis and the other along the y-axis along the y direction that is along the direction of gravity you have acceleration a y y double dot is equal to minus 9.81 now velocity vy that is y dot is equal to minus 9.81 t i am integrating it once position y will be equal to minus 9.81 t square by 2 yeah, sorry plus c1 plus c1 t plus c2 acceleration along x that is x double dot is equal to 0 since along x direction there is no acceleration as such vx that is x dot will be equal to c3 now x as such will be equal to c3 t plus c4 this is along x direction moving on remember these values now it is given that y at time t equals 0 is 0 so substituting the value of y you get minus 9.81 into 0 plus c1 into 0 plus c2 equals 0 that means from this equation we will get c2 equals 0 similarly x at t equals 0 is 0 so x at t equals 0 will be equal to c3 into 0 plus c4 equals 0 that means c4 equals 0 so c2 equals 0 c4 equals 0 I will write it down here, c2 equals 0, c4 equals 0. y dot at t equals 0, that is a corresponding component of velocity 
along the y direction. So if you see the corresponding figure, you have it, it is equal to 1000 cos alpha. Substituting minus 9.81 into 0 plus C1 is equal to 1000 cos alpha. So C1 is equal to 1000 cos alpha. Similarly, x dot at t equals 0 is 1000 sin alpha the initial velocity component along the x direction okay remember alpha is measured with respect to the y axis fine now x dot at t equals 0 we get i think it is c3 so c3 is equal to 1000 sin alpha so c1 is 1000 cos alpha C3 is 1000 sin alpha. Now, now substituting these corresponding values, you will get y equals minus 9.81 t square by 2 plus 1000 cos alpha into t. Similarly, x x will be equal to 1000 sin alpha into t. This will be the corresponding values. Now, as you know, this is the value of angle alpha. You have the plane here. This, when I fire the anti aircraft gun, the path traveled by will be somewhat like this here the path traveled at this here. this angle this is a right triangle so you, here you have here 2000 meters and this is the value of now by the time the aircraft reaches from time t equals 0 to time t equals the time of impact t f so at at time t equals t f the time of impact the value of y will be equal to minus 9.81 t f square by 2 plus 1000 cos alpha into tf this corresponding value of y will be equal to two thousand meters this is one corresponding equation now the second one by the time it reaches this corresponding reaches here the value of distance x x at time t equals t f ok x at time t equals t f will be equal to 1000 sin alpha into t f but what is x t equals t f we can say that that is equal to the velocity multiplied by the time so this i can write it as 138.89 into tf velocity multiplied by v1 into tf okay this will be equal to 1000 sin alpha into tf so crossing it out you will get sin alpha is equal to 138.89 divided by 1000 which means alpha if i take sin inverse i'll get 7.894 degrees sorry 7.984 7.984 degrees so this is how you find the value of 
alpha here. Now, once you get the value of alpha here, you can substitute in this corresponding equation. 2000 is equal to minus 9.81 Cf square by 2 plus 1000 cos 7.984 into Cf. Now, this will turn out to be a quadratic equation. If I bring it here, 4.905 Cf square minus 1000 cos 7.984 Cf plus 2000 equals 0. This will be a quadratic equation. If I solve this quadratic equation, I will get the value of 2.04 seconds. Let us try to solve it out. Now, this is one part. What is the time of impact T? Now, the uh, next question is finding the value of D. Since you know the value of alpha, you can find this corresponding value. Therefore, D will be equal to 2000 tan alpha. That is tan 97.984. So, you will get this. Seven point nine eight four. If you solve this, we will get approximately two eighty meters. So this is how you solve the second corresponding part for finding the value of d. So with this, we will wind up the Cartesian coordinate system. In the next class, we'll be moving on to cylindrical coordinate system. Thank you once again. Thank you.